Hey everybody, it's me, Roger, back with, back with more records. Boy howdy, do I have some records to show. You know, sometimes, you know, I try to go to my local record store once a week or so, and sometimes, you know, that's nothing. You know, you've seen, you know, it's hard to walk out empty-handed. So, um, and then sometimes you get lucky, and like someone sold a big jazz collection at my local. I'm flipping through and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And I had this thing where I'm like, wait, do I have this? Do I have this? And I'm like, I'm taking pictures. I'm like, wait, I, I think I have this. I, Because there's so many records. I'm like, oh, this, this, this. Oh, wait, do I have this? <laughs> I got a little carried away. And, and I went back numerous times just to see. And more, more of this collection seemed to come out. And and anyway, so like, let's just get right into it, right? So it's stuff like this, right? This is, and this is really right up my alley. So Mulhall Richard Abrams, things to come from those now gone on Delmark, originally from 1975. Now, the thing about these records are they're reissues from the 80s and early 90s. Um, so a lot of them are kind of like the last of the analogs, as Mark Darn's Dr. Deadwax R.I.P. his channel. Um, <laughs> anyway. And hey, Ryan, die. <laughs> hey. Some folks actually watch these things. It's amazing. Uh, anyway, so this. I knew I didn't have this. Beautiful mid-80s, looks like, pressing. No barcode or anything. Beautiful. Um, excellent. Mulhall Richard Abrams, you know, the founder of the AACM out of Chicago. Um... And this has his his kind of his ensemble playing his music. Um, yeah, this is great. This is great. So, so and then I thought, oh, oh yeah, I have this. I I don't need this. No, I get home and I'm like, no, no, I don't have this. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, Liz, Liz, I, I thought I had this right, but I, I, I but I can't go drive all the way back into Nashville again. So she's like, oh, I'll go get it. I need to go to the store. I'll go get it. She did. She went. She went to the record store. Now the, the amazing thing is, is that she's not into. I mean, she loves music. She loves that I buy records and play records. But she's not into record stores. She's not into shopping. Period. But she's like, oh, oh, I'll go get it for you. So she did. Yes. So here, Maurice McIntyre, "Humility in the Light of Create of the Creator," "Humility in the Light of Creator." Lacking an article there. Oh, again, on Delmark, this is from, originally from 1969. More AACM stuff. Just a great band. Members of the Art Ensemble and Leo Smith and Amina Claudine Myers. And yeah, this is great. This is so good. Again, probably mid-80s pressing. Um, and whoever this guy, and I assume it's a guy, Whoever this guy was, he took care of his records. Like, he cleaned them, put them in nice new rice paper sleeves. Of course, I cleaned them again because that's the kind of guy I am. But, so, yeah, so I said, well, okay, it's this record, you know. And if someone's grabbed it, you know, there's a Bill Evans record that, that you know, get that instead. She comes home with this. She gets both. Now, okay, now here's the thing. Another thing about this jazz vein that I'm tapping here. This is still sealed. This is still sealed. Original jazz classics, circa, you know, again, mid '80s. I'm guessing the last round of, you know, I remember seeing these things around. They were like five or six bucks when they came out, and they did. There were hundreds of them. Um, anyway, still sealed. What do I do with this? What do I do with this? You know, it's got the the hype sticker and. Anyway, Liz, <laughs> she's amazing. She's amazing. So yeah, so she made sure I got I got all you know. All, so there's more. So Leo Smith, Spirit Catcher, on Nessa Records from 1979. More great AACM stuff. You know, he didn't make a lot of records until well later on. Um, and this just has you know a young Pharaoh and Aklaf on drums. Uh, an interesting piece for uh, Leo Smith on trumpet and three harps and a conductor. 
It was always very ambitious and great, great stuff. Yeah, gorgeous condition. Um, Black Arthur Blythe, Bush Baby on uh, the Adelphi Jazz Line from 1978. This is this is great. Uh, this is out of Missouri, the bag, kind of like you know. The AACM in Chicago, this is sort of the equivalent out of St. Louis, Missouri. So you have Arthur, uh, you have Arthur Blythe on saxophone. Um, who is this? Bob Stewart on tuba and Ahmed Abdullah on conga. Really interesting lineup, right? And it's, it's great. I mean, you know, Arthur Blythe, he made some great records. Um, and this is definitely one of them. And not one you see around a lot. Really good, really good, really good. Um, Donald Bird, Kofi. This is on Blue Note, originally from, uh, when? 1969, I think it came out in the 1970s. And, and this is a, a Duke, Duke person production, I believe. Um, so pre, you know, Blackbird, pre Mazelle Brothers, Donald Bird. This just cooks. This is kind of in more of a Miles Electric Kind of, kind of Miles Electric kind of thing, um, and this looks like, yeah, 1994. So, I have some other like mid 90s Blue Notes that I think are actually the last of the analogs because I remember they did like the Connoisseur series and they were CDs, but I remember they made a big deal about the vinyl and you know it wasn't cheap and then I think even Freemer said that they were cool. And anyway, this sounds great. This is you know. Um, I'm super happy to have, you know, these, I'm super happy, super happy. I have so many records to show. Uh, cheers, cheers to whoever dumped off your jazz collection at Great Escape. You know, th stuff like this just doesn't happen all the time. So uh, tonight I'm having a little Harpeth Brewing Upstream San Fran Lager. So, Little Harp with Brewing, this is where I played my gig, opening for Nels Klein and Larry Oaks and Gerald Cleaver. Um, it's a brewery, and they make really good beer, and, and this is this is in the style of Anchor Steam, and mm -hmm, it's quite tasty. I, I, you know, I try to support local when I can. All right, so now here's an original. This was up on the wall, and I couldn't resist. Uh, this may not be from the same collection. I got this pretty recently. Um, Alice Coltrane's. Uh, Radha Krishna Nama Sankirtana. Yeah. Um, um, Warner Brothers from 1977. Now, there's some like big box set coming out of like her Warner Brothers records, and I have now all of them but one. Um, so I think I'm going to hold out to try to get that last one on original. And now, this is a real mixed bag, especially if you have a problem with like Indian devotional music, because pretty much the whole first side is, is pretty traditional devotional Indian budgets, you know. Um, but with like some beautiful musicianship. But on the second side, there's some really cooking stuff with her on electric organ and really, I'm not gonna say redeems it because it's not like it needs redeeming, um, but it's worth having even if you have a problem with the, the budgets. And Alice Coltrane records are, you know, they're, pretty, they're rare. They're <coughs> so, Here's another 90s era Blue Note reissue. Anthony Williams Spring. I believe this is his first solo album uh, from 1965. This great band, Wayne Shorter and Sam Rivers on tenor saxophones, Herbie Hancock on piano, Gary Peacock on bass, and Tony Williams on drums. Killer. Now, this is um, direct metal mastered by Rudy Van Gelder. His initials are in the dead wax. Um, and. I believe pressed by Teldec in Germany. It's a really beautiful sounding pressing. You know, I I would love, I would love original Blue Notes from the '60s. But you know, those things are even chewed up. They're worth money. So really happy. But this sounds fantastic. I can't complain. Um, okay, so they, there were some prestige things again. Prestige Blue Note. They are all part of this. This is again going. This is going back to the '80s. This is an OJC thing. <laughs> Unfortunate title: Mating Call. Tad Dameron with uh, John Coltrane. 
or prestige from the you know, late 50s uh, you know it's a jam session um, but John Col John Coltrane John Coltrane it really nice sound really nice sound and you know even though I have I have the most recent like big box set of like all of John Coltrane's prestige stuff including his sideman stuff like all of it and it sounds really really good but I gotta tell you there's something about well, there's something about just the physical object, but this sounds really, really good. You know, I'm not going to go like, oh, I wish I had an original because it would sound so much better. No, I don't think so. Okay, so here's um, The Amazing Bud Powell, Volume 1, Volume 2. These are 1984 Teldec DMM mastered things. Uh, they sound terrific. They're in original mono. Bud Powell, of course, you know fucking ridiculous pianist um, and one of the founding beboppers. So this is early bebop stuff. Um, Charles Mingus, Three or Four Shades of Blues. This is um, a, this is late period Mingus on Atlantic from 1977, but it's great. And he even though he remakes some stuff like you know Better Get Hit in Your Soul and Goodbye Pork Pie Hat and stuff, he's got this killer modern band with like Larry Coryell and you know just Ricky Ford, Philip Catherine. George Morris, people like that. This is great, and Mingus is playing is even great. You know, it, well, I, is he even? He's not even playing. Is he? No, he's playing. Man, late period Mingus is every bit as good as all other Mingus. Here's another John Coltrane uh, prestige date. Training in John Coltrane with the Red Garland Trio. Pretty, pretty classic cover there, you know. It's so another thing about like getting these things on vinyl. It's like just you know they're just such beautiful objects. You know, no, it doesn't smell like it's been or you know sitting around since the '80s in some moldy basement. No, no, it's been taken care of since the '80s. Great, sounds terrific. Miles Davis on debut, Blue Moods. I wasn't really familiar with this um, with Charles Mingus on bass because this is Mingus's label. Uh, Elvin Jones on drums. Great cover. Uh, killer, killer. Uh, Bags Groove, Miles Davis, with Sonny Rollins, Milt Jackson, Thelonious Monk, Horace Silver, Percy Heath, Kenny Clark, Prestige, another jam session. Uh, but, you know, I have a soft spot for the vibes, and Milt Jackson was a master, and this, this has some really nice groovy stuff on it. Um, another Bill Evans, Waltz for Debbie. Um, classic, you know, Live at the Vanguard, 1961. Scott LaFaro and Paul Motion, uh, just like Portrait and Jazz. Uh, there's a wonderful three CD set that's the entire run, and it sounds great, and it has everything, all the clinking glasses and cash register clinking, all of that stuff. <clears throat> but you know what? The albums are perfect little gems. Um, the problem is, where am I going to put these? Now, here, look at this. Look at this. You know... Again, I have wonderful sounding CDs of all this stuff, but it was like still sealed, cooking, relaxing, working, and steaming with the Miles Davis Quintet. You know, these are the classic freaking John Coltrane, you know, great, great stuff. I'm sure sounds fantastic. <laughs> Do I leave them sealed? Do I open them and try to try to retain the, the the shrink wrap on them? You know how 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 much of a stamp collecting thing am I going to make this? You know, my wife's like, get rid of that stinky shrink wrap. Although it's not stinky. It's I don't know. I I mean, look at this. What an abundance of riches. You know, of course, I'm going to open them and listen to them because keeping records sealed is stupid. Also, st still sealed, George Russell Sextet, Stratus Funk. I believe this is his first record. 1960. Yeah, great. Uh, another debut record thing, the Quintet. Uh, live at Jazz at Massey Hall, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Bud Powell, Max Roach, and Charlie Mingus. This is classic. Still sealed. Gene Ammons uh, with John Coltrane. Uh, the Big Sound, Gene Hammond's All-Stars. Still sealed. Art Pepper, Smack Up. Um, 
his most famous record, you know, and what an apt title. Um, you know, I think it was especially hard for white guys, you know, not to succumb to heroin addiction because it made them seem blacker or something. I don't know. Um, so, still sealed. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? Now, I got this at another place, so it's not part of that collection. Not just another couple. Oh, we're almost done here. Uh, Ferris Sanders Quintet, his first album on ESP. Now, this... <laughs> I can't tell with this. I believe this is pressed at Scorpio. I think this is similar to the line of things like those Sun Ra Saturns from like the late 2000s or early 2000s or whenever the hell that was. <clears throat> you know, with ESP disc, it's really hard to tell because their whole their whole business model it just oh well. It has it's his his. Its history is problematic. I'll put it that way. Um, so this sounds okay. The pressing is not good. Um, I don't know that I'm going to hold on to that. This, however, is an original copy of uh, Stan Getz with Eddie Sauter. Focus on the Verve from, I'm not really sure, early 60s. Now, I'm not the hugest Stan Getz fan, um, although he's made some classic records like the, you know, Gets in Gilberto, and, and this is really fun. The, now, this I, I don't know that it's a soundtrack, but it sounds like a soundtrack. And, you know, Eddie Sauter was like a big arranger guy, and um, you might could almost call this third stream music because it's so through composed with sort of Stan Getz doing his thing in very prescribed sort of situations. Um, but it cooks, and the arrangements are really, really engaging and. It's very vivid, jump cutty kind of thing. It's a cool record, I, you know. Um, fairly common, hard to find in good shape. This is this is in nice shape. And that concludes this edition of Rogers Records. That was a lot of jazz. Now, um, I said I would respond to comments, and I didn't because I'm a big liar. I'm a, I'm a jerk. I'm, a, I'm such a jerk. But I do appreciate your comments. I read them. And leave a comment below about what I should do with the, the, the you know, leave them sealed? Do I open them? I, I, you know, what would you do if you happened upon these things? You know, this Miles Davis records especially, it's like, you know, they're not going to get any less valuable in a stamp collecting sense. So, and I have the music elsewhere. So, so anyway... I appreciate your comments. Do I save the, the shrink wrap? Of course, Andreas, Sonic Main Liner, I, hey, if you're watching, uh, I, I, hope, I hope you come back again. I hope it's not another six months. <sighs> yes. Okay, well, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. I really was pretty excited to share that with you um, because, you know, these kinds of quality records just don't fall in your lap every day. I really wasn't planning to buy that many records, and I don't know where I'm going to put them, but hey, first world problems. At least we're still first world, for now. <laughs> okay, with that, I bid you farewell. Take care. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you soon.